Hi, welcome to the Leeson House Google Classroom. My name's Pete, and in this workshop, we're going to run through how to use ArcGIS in its most simplest form, uh, but also how to present data using ArcGIS. And this is a really high level skill for those doing their NEA coursework, uh, but it's also a great thing for any geographer to learn because GIS is one of those uh, elements that crops up all the time and you probably use it in everyday life without realizing it. Uh, GIS is geographical information systems and essentially what that means is displaying different types of data on a map. So we're going to have a look at one example of this and how you can use it uh, in your geography class. So we're going to go to Google and we're going to search for ArcGIS and this is the website we're looking for, ArcGIS Online. And this is actually uh, an industry standard level GIS tool. It's used around the world for all different types of projects, but we're going to use the free version to help us display some of our uh, survey data on a map. So you'll be brought to this page to start with. It's the ArcGIS Online sign-in page. You don't need to sign in to use this. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the toolbar at the top and we're going to click on map up here. And what this will do is it'll take us to the map view for ArcGIS. It looks quite similar to Google Maps and it will give us an overview of the UK to start with. But just like Google Maps, we can search for any place or any postcode in the search bar at the top right over here. So we're going to go to Swanage to start with just so that you can see how that works and it'll zoom in on the map there. OK, so you can see quite clearly it looks a bit like Google Maps. If we go up to the top left over here, there's a section for base map so we can actually change what this underlying map looks like. And ArcGIS has loads of options. Most of you will be familiar with imagery. It's basically satellite view. OK, so just like you would get on Google Maps or Google Earth. Uh, and there are loads of other different options here to play with. You want to pick one that works well with whatever data you're using. And we're going to use the topographic one to start with just because it's nice and clear and easy to see what's going on. If we go back over to the right of the toolbar next to the search bar, there is an option called measure. This comes with three really useful tools. The first one is area. The second one is distance and the third one is location. So under area, you can change the units to whatever you need. Uh, let's go with square meters today and you just click on the map and draw your shape and double click to finish and it will give you the real world area that that shape is covering. So if you wanted to know how big uh, your local field was or your local shopping center, whatever it might be, this is a really useful tool for that. The next tool along is the distance tool. Again, we can change the units to whatever we think would be useful. I'm going to stick with kilometers for this one. And again, it's click on the map and you can map different points and you can double click when you're finished. So in this case, we're going to do Swanage Bay. It comes out four and a bit kilometers. OK, but you can use this for all kinds of different things. If you wanted to measure a transect, for example, this is quite a useful tool for doing that. The final measure uh, tool is the location tool. And this is the most useful thing within ArcGIS. Particularly as you're stuck at home, you can find any longitude and latitude for a location using this tool. If we click on a spot, it'll bring up its latitude and longitude. Normally, when you're out doing your field work, you can collect this data on your phone using a GPS or an app. Uh, but if we forgot to do that or we're doing our coursework or field work from home, this is a really useful tool for that. OK, so secondary data collecting our longitude and latitude of different points from our field work. This longitude and latitude is what we're going to be using to plot our data into ArcGIS. So once you've got all your points, you'll have to record these down uh, alongside your data. And to do that, we're going to be using Excel. So you can see I've opened up uh, Excel with my data. I've got a latitude and longitude 
for each of the sites where I measured my data. And I've also put in different columns for each of the different types of data that I measured. So we've got number of HMOs here. We've got our environmental quality uh, and a few other categories that we measured. So this data uh, is human data that we were doing within a town. Okay. And you can see that I've got 12 different sites, okay, each with a unique latitude and longitude and a set of data that corresponds to that site. Okay. Once you've got it, your data set up in Excel like this, along with the latitude and longitude, we have to save it in the correct format in order to export it into ArcGIS Online. So if you go to File and Save As, we can choose the file type up here on this drop down menu. So you can see normally it would save as an Excel workbook. What we're going to do for this to work is we're going to save as CSV comma delimited. So this option here that is highlighted. OK, it's really important that you save your work in this format for it to display onto your ArcGIS. OK, so that's the format we're using CSV comma delimited. Now, when you save your work as this format, it'll often ask you a couple of questions about flattening your data um, or removing some of the different sheets from your spreadsheet. So saving it as a CSV, it'll only save the sheet that you are currently on uh, and it won't save any uh, buttons or formatting that you've done. It's quite a simplified saved version. OK. Once we've saved it in that format, in the CSV format, we're then going to find our file within the folder. So you can see here I've got my saved file, Boscombe column two data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop that onto the web page. So I'm going to do that now and then I'll show you what that looks like on ArcGIS. So you click on the file. And you click and drag it into the web page. OK, so now that I've done that, it's displayed the data that I had in my spreadsheet in the location that it was taken. So you see clearly here that I've done a transect through Boscombe and I've recorded different data at set intervals across this transect. Now, at the moment, it's showing me my EQA total. If you look over here on the right, you can choose an attribute to show. So it's showing me my EQA total. And the larger the circle, the better the score was for that location. We can change the attribute to any of the columns that we had on our spreadsheet. So it might be that we want to look at the number of HMOs. And we can display that instead. There you go. It's changed my data. Um, and we can also compare data. So we can add an attribute and see if there's a correlation between two different things. So here I've got number of HMOs against EQA total. OK, and my key shows that number of HMOs is done by a graded color scale and my EQA is done by the size of the circle. Okay. Once you've got this data displayed on your map, you can play around with the colors. You can play around with the options of how to display it. Uh, you can change which attributes to show. Once you're happy with the data that you're displaying, if you go up to the top right and click print map with legend, it will give you a JPEG that you can save or print along with a legend for your data. So you can see here I've got the legend on my left hand side. I've even got a scale in the bottom right. And in a second, it'll display that map that I had on ArcGIS. So if I wanted to add this to a project or print it, this is the way to do it. Let's just wait for that to load. There we go. OK, and we can right click and save it as a picture or we can print it from this web page and use that later on in our investigation. So ArcGIS, quite a simple thing to use once you understand the longitude and latitude in Excel and saving it as a CSV. But a really good skill, really high level skill for those carrying out their investigation and wanting to display their data in an interesting and different format.